sentire media. Last night I turned on the TV and you know we have all of the channels here. We have Netflix and Disney and Apple and Prime. It's amazing how we can have all of these channels and still have nothing to watch. But I was skimming through and I found I stumbled on an Oprah interviews and I haven't you know I don't watch a lot of American TV anymore and Oprah I used to love Oprah obviously as millions and millions of people did. So she had this uh, show and some of you may have seen it or heard it. It's called The Me You Don't See. And this was a little expose really on mental health in the US. And it was with uh, Prince Harry and Oprah, of course, but also featured Lady Gaga and other people who have been suffering from mental health issues. And as I was watching it, it reminded me about something that we did this year at Smart Move Italy in actually our New Life in Italy membership. And uh, what we found or what I was finding for people that after they had moved to Italy, all of you know the bells and whistles and all of the work and the bureaucracy and the, the stress that comes with moving, once they're here and they start to settle down, there's a bit of a shift in their mindset and there's a disconnect between these built up expectations of what a new life in Italy will be and what they were experiencing. And what this show really resonated with me when I was listening to all of the people talking, one guy said, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was, but he said, um, you know, everybody in this world really has been touched by or knows someone very close to them who has had some sort of mental health issue, whether or not it was very, very serious and lifelong or just temporary or stress related. And it got me to thinking about myself and my family. And yeah, that's true. I mean, I can talk about friends or family members that I know have struggled with some mental health and, you know, can, I can make a confession myself. I also did. And it really was one of the motivating factors for us to move to Italy. Now, I used to live in Vancouver, Canada, and as beautiful as a city it is, it was very rainy and very dark for many, many months. And I always would I'd joke and I'd say, you know, from October to April, there wouldn't be, you know, the sun and it would be constantly gray and cloudy. And what I found is as I started to get older, this dreariness and this grayness and the lack of sunlight really started to cause problems for my happiness. And it's called SAD, Seasonal Affected Disorder. And I just thought I was, you know, just didn't like the rain. And really what it was is it was making me progressively as I got older, sadder and sadder and sadder. And it was getting harder and harder for me to live in Vancouver and live in this type of a climate. I'm also British and I found the same problems when I was in England because there is so much rain and so much cloud cover. And it's not that you need the heat and the burning 40 degrees Celsius that we get here in the summertime. It's just the sunlight, the, the energy that comes from the brightness and the vitamin D in the sun that I really need. And it was the motivating factor to moving to Italy. And I really believe that Italy has saved my life in a lot of ways. It's certainly saved my mental health. It saved my feeling of and my energy levels and my feeling of, um, you know, inspiration to do more things or try other things, you know, get out of that sadness and that really tiring, just want to sleep mentality of when it was raining all the time. And I know that other people have health, mental health issues that are far more severe than that. But for me, it was severe enough that I had to make a change. And today is um, about that. Today's episode is about mental health. And we're going to be talking about what it's like to relocate to Italy while finding this balance and adjusting to a different culture, you know, trying to fit in and overcoming the loneliness that often comes with it once everything has settled down. I'm going to be joined by Camilla Jackson, who is a trained behavioral therapist, and she actually works inside our New Life in Italy membership, which is a private membership for people who have already moved here and are suffering a little bit for uh, these adjustments and this mental health of becoming you know, part of a new culture. And she's been practicing for almost 20 years, and she'll be sharing her thoughts with you on how to conquer these ups and downs of moving to a new country. 
I'm Samantha Wilson, Chief Dream Maker at SmartMoveItaly.com, and this is A New Life in Italy, a show where each week I take you behind the scenes of what it's really like to move to Italy, introduce you to some fascinating people, answer your questions, and show you how starting a new life in Bel Paese is possible for you. All right, so you've decided, you've decided for you, it is finally time for you to take that huge giant leap and move to Italy. You know, everything is in place. Maybe you've sold all your stuff because who needs, you know, a quarter of the stuff that we collect in our lives. Maybe you've already sold your house. You say goodbye to your friends and your family. You've been crying. You're, you know, kind of excited and nervous at the same time. And this whole buildup, because it can take a couple of years. So this whole big buildup is really filled with all of these questions and this excitement and, you know, all these dreams that you've had about what your new life in Italy is going to be. And then you arrive and you're settling into your new house. You've got a lot of things you have to take care of at the beginning because it is, you know, bureaucracy hell here. It truly is. And, and then finally, when it's all kind of settled down, you are left with yourself. And you're left with what you want to do every day and who you want to do it with. And I've seen and met many people who've moved to Italy either as a couple or on their own as a single person. I've found one thing that is in common. When I ask people, why do you want to move to Italy? They first bring up the food and the, you know, the architecture and the art and anything that's drawn them here as a visitor. But what really happens, and as we continue to talk a little bit more, what obviously is, is so clear to me and becomes clear to them too, is that they are wanting to move to Italy for change, some kind of change in their life, whether it is to get away from the negativity of where they're living, or, you know, we have a lot of people trying to get away from politics. And we, you know, maybe they've had a crisis in their life and they're just wanting to start fresh and start new. Something is pushing them away from where they are. Or sometimes there's this pull factor where they've watched and consumed all these dreamy romantic movies and they want to move to Italy to live a similar life that they've seen. They've read all the blogs, they've listened to me, they've you know, joined all the groups, they've consumed all of the Italianness of the world and they decided that they're going to move to Italy and immediately adopt all of these benefits of living a happier, healthier life here in Italy. And um, what happens though is that on arrival, expectations don't always meet reality here. And in fact, I think in every single case, this is true. Some are more severe than others. Because while when you move here, you will meet a few people during your first few months. Again, you're going to be super, super busy, but often what happens is the loneliness will settle in. You might start to feel a little bit unfulfilled. You know, if you're not really a, an outgoing person, you can start to put the walls up around you. Obviously, language is going to be a barrier for the most part, for most people at the beginning and usually for quite a long time. So building relationships with new people, new Italians or foreigners becomes strained and difficult and embarrassing. And um, what happens is you just start to avoid them and you start to conjugate towards people, first of all, who can speak your language, which is perfectly fine, by the way. You know, we have people that want to move here and they say, oh, I don't want anything to do with, you know, the people from my country. I just want to live Italian and be Italian and adopt everything that there is about being Italian. Well, the reality is, is that that's not really going to help you at the beginning, at least, you need a tribe. You need to have support for the experiences that you're going to be going through. People who have been here and have, or are going through the same process as you, because you can think and, and plan as much as you want, but unless you're actually on the ground and experiencing the frustration and the, um, you know, feeling you know, like a fish out of water in some times and some points, you really don't know what will happen. And so what happens is, is they start to feel really lonely and then they start to retreat and go inside and Netflix becomes their best friend. And um, then their life just starts, they start to question 
what they've done and they realize that it's not always so convenient to live in Italy. All of it's not easy to get certain some simple things done and maybe you know if they're single and they're wanting to meet and date other people this is another challenge that people seem to find and and then the confidence starts to get attacked and the loneliness sets in again and it just becomes this vicious cycle. Now I'm not trying to scare you at all I'm just trying to explain to you that we're seeing these things from a lot of foreigners that move to Italy and it's not um, something to be ashamed of or embarrassed of or hide. As a matter of fact, it's something that really needs to be discussed and approached from a really both a practical point of view and from somebody who has some skills in order to get you to realize you know, those turning points in your journey here and in your new life here where you know, you can, you have a choice, you have a fork in the road, road, either you're going to embrace the change and the frustration, learn from it and push through the stress and the bad feelings, or you're just going to retreat and start getting negative and, you know, complaining and blaming others and just the, you know, the hatred starts to build in or the questioning of what you've done for yourself that seems so clear before you moved here becomes quite clouded if you don't have someone to talk to, whether that is a friend or it's a therapist or it's just me chatting to you here. So today we're going to dive into that and I am not a behavioral therapist. I have experienced probably all of the feelings that you will feel or are feeling if you're here now. And I have had to work through a lot of those um, questionable points and turning points along my journey here. And I continue to be faced with those because, you know, we're foreigners in a foreign land and always will be. So today I have a very special guest that is going to join me and join you. And hopefully we can work through some of these problems and give you some real concrete tools that you can use when uh, you're faced with some of these questions. So joining me today is Camilla Jackson. Now she has had almost two decades worth of experience. She is a certified behavioral therapist and is the founder of a practice called Loving You. And for those of you who are part of New Life in Italy and part of our membership, you know who Camilla is. And every month she has an open session that she talks about uh, these feelings of cultural adaptation, how to communicate to Italians, how to understand these little innuendos or these little behavioral differences, these cultural changes and these cultural differences that can lead us to say the wrong things or do the wrong thing or offend each other or feel offended when it actually wasn't the problem, you know, wasn't intended in the first place. So I am so happy. Hi, Camilla. Thanks for joining A New Life in Italy. I am, uh, I have a lot of things to ask you today. Oh, hey, Sam. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, you know, um, what we've, well, you and I have had this conversation in the past about this, t- this change that people go through or the, the disconnect right. between reality and expectations. Yeah. And I know we talk yeah. about it a lot within our groups, but just before we dive into that, maybe can you tell the listeners who haven't had the pleasure of meeting you yet, who you are, where you, you know, are you living in Italy and tell me about yeah. what your practice is? Yeah, sure, Sam. So I am um, a therapist educated in the UK and from the UK originally, but mixed blood. So I have this international accent. If you can't place me, that's totally fine. Um, But I've been living in Italy for over 16 years now. And I've had the fortune of living in Rome, Venice, Milan, and now Florence. So a few years in each of those cities and the majority of my time in Florence where I have settled and married an Italian. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very well versed in Italian culture. And um, I want to try and offer some tips to help you all just make that move with as great, a greater ease as possible. Um, This comfort's totally normal, but it's how to manage that and not overreact to it. And that's what I hope to talk about with you. Yeah. And I think that that's such a great point. Normal, completely normal, because I think Mm -hmm. when some people move here, you know, sometimes their friends and their families think they're crazy, right? They think, what are you doing? Why are you (laughs) leaving everything? And where, why are you, how could you move across the world? Don't you love where you are? So then when you make the move and if you're feeling some doubt or feeling Mm. some questions, maybe you think something's wrong, right? Yeah, absolutely. But I think it's really important to get your 
Um, I always suggest, like you write, a, a list of pros and cons to going and pros and cons to staying so that you're very clear in your mind what you're doing because the outside noise has its own intentions. You know, family might say don't go because ultimately they want you to stay, um, whether it's to look after their kids or just because they love you very much and want to spend more time with you. But if you have this internal itch and it's been there for a while, you have to listen to it. Mm -hmm. To not do something and to regret it is worse than trying. Oh, I so believe that. But when you say write down the pros and cons, so can you give me an example? Because it, the pros I'm not thinking should be the superficial things like, oh, you know, I, I just feel happier or well, maybe that's a good one. Or, you know, maybe not the superficial things like I like yeah. the food or I need the weather. I need, you know, maybe give some examples. Yeah. Yeah. Good point, Sam. I mean, I think um, feelings, we all experience a million th feelings every single day, right? Mm -hmm. Based on our hormones, based on the weather, based on our relationships. So, you know, to go by feelings isn't always a clever idea, but to write down like concrete reasons such as um, a pro to going might be because it's better climate, better food. Yes. A more open culture because you enjoy the language, because you enjoy living with a different set of principles, um, because you'd rather live in a culture, I'm referring to Italy here, you'd rather live in a culture that is um, more natural and more heartfelt. Um, these will be pros to go to, going to Italy. Cons to going to Italy might be like, you know, initially I'll be alone. Um, it'll cost me a lot of money, um, a language barrier, but, you know, all of these things, you can work through them. But I think it's very important to have them pen on paper just so you can establish, like, what your main pros and cons are mm -hmm. and always keep that at the forefront of your mind. So are you suggesting that before somebody moves, they should do this work ahead of time to plan? I think ideally. I think ideally, Sam. Yeah, because, I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, you, you're always going to be bombarded with, with what other people think. Mm -hmm. And the important thing is that you have your thoughts very clear because you're not going to move here for someone else because they say, wow, that's so amazing because they're jealous. You should move for your own reasons. And one of the biggest reasons um, we experience unhappiness in life in general is because of expectations. Right. And reality not living up to our expectations. So that I think is really important to be very clear as to what your expectations are and the pros and the cons list should help you establish your expectations and just have more clarity as to what you're really doing and why you're doing it. Yeah, and maybe serve as a reminder. So when you're yes. feeling a little, you know, a little off balance, maybe you can go yes. back and go, what? What was I thinking? Yes. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Yes, 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 yes exactly. It's the same as, uh, you know, I advise in relationships, you know, like at the, be <laughs> the beginning relationships are fluffy and wonderful. It should be. And as they go further down the line, sometimes, you know, through arguments and stale moments, we can forget why we're with the person. So it's also useful to write down the pros and the cons to people as well. <laughs> <laughs> so journaling can remind us of a lot of things we like and we don't like. <laughs> well, that's a really good point. But, you know, let's think about, I want to actually just touch on another little thing you said, and that was expectations not meeting reality because Italy yeah. is well you know Italy is a brand you know especially mm. Tuscany yes. you know I live in Tuscany yes. and so do you I know and um yes. you know this is this has conjures up just the name in itself conjures up images of lifestyle and culture yes. that it's so easy to fall into the trap so how can somebody yeah. manage that well first of all I think to become familiar with the area you want to move to by actually going and spending a few months there um, and making it real because there are a lot of TV shows and movies that give one perspective of a city and then you have that imprinted in your mind. And if you move with that expectation of it's going to be something that you've seen before, you're going to be massively disappointed because TV is fake. <laughs> mm. Movies are fake. Um, you're better off going and experiencing the country um, for a couple of months if you can and that city. And then just, you know, trying to make local friends if possible. Um, I'm a huge believer in making expat friends, actually. Um, I know you mentioned that before, that it's like something that a lot of people initially think, oh, I don't want to make any friends with expats. I just want to integrate with Italians. But believe it or not, like um, 
Italians would, might want to know you because they'll find you fascinating and different, but they won't be able to relate to all your sad emotions or frustrations because they haven't been exposed to them like you will have. Mm-hmm. So I think it's very important to have the comfort of someone who speaks the same language as you, who can relate to your struggles um, because that's a form of therapy in itself. Mm -hmm. I think there's a balance between that as well too, right? So when you're here and you have, you're building your tribe of like-minded people. So obviously it's usually the language is the piece that is connecting them, the language and the move. Um, And obviously probably the country as well, but there's, there's a little bit of um, a risk to that in that it can also prevent you from stepping out of that environment as well. So there's probably a transition period that you should plan. Yeah, that's a really good point, Sam. I think um, it is important that you still make an effort with the language and still try and make, you know, relationships with the locals, but you know, initially, um, it's like you're leaving your homeland and all your family. Um, and even though, thank God for technology, we can communicate with anyone everywhere. Um, it's important to recognize that they're not going to be experiencing what you're experiencing. And you don't want to spend your whole life on the phone relaying stories to them that they can't really grasp. Mm-hmm. You want to be sharing that with the people on the ground who have breathe the same air as you and feeling the same temperature Mm -hmm. and, and people who you can actually make, you know, real time relationships with. And I think initially make it easy for yourself because it is tremendously courageous and wonderful part credit to us too, because we've done it as well um, (laughs) to move country um, and, and start a new start fresh. You've got to stretch, you've got to go get out of your comfort zone um, and I, I use the word stretch because I think it's a great uh, metaphor in a sense, you know, in the moment, it doesn't always feel comfortable, but after you're very, very grateful for the experience. Mm. Oh, I like grown. that. That's good. That's mm-hmm. really good. I love that. And I love that you give people permission to make friends from their own country or with their own language, because I know some of them feel so very taboo. They feel like they're running mm-hmm. away from their country And, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, there's, and it's also this attack that some people get, I notice in, on some social where people will write a post, where's the best place to live where there's, for example, a lot of Americans and people just attack and why do you want to move to Italy and just be around the Americans? (laughs) And, and, you know, it is a good point, but at the same time, you know, giving people permission that it's okay to have your tribe Mm -hmm. and have your clan of people that just Mm -hmm. get where you're from and know where you're going. And it just yes. can make you feel much safer in, you know, it, yes. mentally and emotionally much, much safer. Yes. Yeah. Which is so important, Sam. Like, you know, you should never underestimate the importance of having that, you know, real time comfort and support. Mm-hmm. Um, it's much easier to make with your own culture. And believe it or not, you know, let's give an example of Americans. You know, the Americans you're going to meet, meet in Italy, you'd never meet them in America. First, right. because they're not there. Mm-hmm. Second off, because they're like you, they're a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. No, so very you're good more point. likely to relate to them. Yeah. And you're still going to grow because you're meeting people from different parts of even your home country with different experiences. Yes. So you're still, you're still stepping out of your comfort zone. You're still stretching, yes. like you said, but just, yes. just not until yes. you ache, <laughs> right? Just not until yes. you pull yeah, something no, at the no, beginning. No yeah. bone breaking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you know, you did also touch about the language and, um, yeah. you know, I've done another episode on learning the language and the importance of it to settle in. Yeah. And I know that when it comes to feeling you know, the loneliness and feeling that you're not connecting with people obviously has to do with communication, which is language. And when you, you know, I always think about it when you're older and you think back to the friends that you had as a child, you know, those friends that you you still have them, that they just know you so well and you, you don't even, they know what you're going to do. They can anticipate your reaction. And when you move to another country, and your language isn't the same, even your cultural cues are, are off are different. It's it, the relationships never feel as deep or as connected or intuitive 
as they are. Right. And if you don't have, I mean, they will eventually, because I have some Italian friends. I mean, I have one that's literally like my sister. We read each other minds and it yeah. freaks me out because uh. we both say we must have uh. been connected in some way because we're <laughs> identical and we've had the same experiences in life, you know, growing up in another part of the world. So it, it does happen. It takes time and language helps, obviously. I think you've hit a really um, great point there, Sam. I mean, you're, you're, the most important thing is just not to compare because you're, you're stepping into an, another hybrid version of yourself. Um, you're kind of, in a sense, reinventing yourself, moving to another country, because everything that you had in your previous world, um, let's say you lived on like Fifth Avenue in New York, you know, people associate you with Fifth Avenue. Um, they treat you differently. You react to them differently because of the identity they push onto you. And so believe it or not, you get, you get cocooned into this kind of personality, whether you like it or not, going to certain places, avoiding other places, talking to certain people, avoiding other people. And then when you move to another country, you're at ground zero mm -hmm. and you have no reference points and no one can tie you to anything. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, you kind of, you can, you can be whoever you want to be, which is really freeing, but also terrifying because you're like, oh my gosh, like, who am I? And how do I place myself with all these people? Yeah. And that's why, again, I go back to, you know, like reminding the importance of connecting with people who speak the same language initially. Mm -hmm. And then once you have that solid foundation and you have like a, a sense of confidence to out, you know, to express yourself to someone, you'll have more tolerance for people who can't necessarily understand you like mm -hmm. verbally, but at times, a very I don't know if you found this but I have a very intuitive people because they're very heartfelt mm -hmm. um so you don't need to say words correctly you can pull faces you can use your hands they they read body language very well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're very forgiving of mm -hmm. mistakes or, or or if you can't speak they will try and help you as opposed to other cultures that I know of that are less forgiving <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, and much more condescending when you don't speak their language fluently. Yeah. Italians aren't like that at all. Right. So I think, you know, naturally, because it's a heartfelt country, they allow you to be yourself yeah. and they will try and help you express yourself. And they give lots of like um, reassurance which I think is wonderful, mm -hmm. you know, um, from, from the touch, from the smiles, um, you know, and, and from their, their hand gestures and, and the, the, um, the amount of time they invest in trying to communicate with you. Cause I don't know if you've noticed this sound, but like, no one's on a clock here. No, like, no one ever tells me like, I've got to go. I've got to rush unless they're foreign. Right. The Italians you can always tell, rush. you can always tell the foreigner walking through Florence cause they're walking at you know, six times the pace that the Italians are, you know, and that's a normal pace for them. No, you're right. And, and I think that this is so common. And this is what the pull is to people to Italy is that mm. feeling of that, you know, we, we kind of just use an easy word, like saying they're very welcoming, but it's more than that. The Italians mm. give you this sense that, that there's always time for you mm. and there's time yes. in the day and I have asked this question out in our groups in the past from people, and I've said, you know, think of a time where you couldn't believe that an Italian did something for you. And the stories come back are, are hilarious. And there's so many of them, you know, people that spend, mm. they'll meet somebody on the street and they say, well, where can I find you know, this address? And yeah. the Italian will literally just stop everything and walk them for 20 minutes yeah. to the yeah. street. And yeah. this isn't, this yeah. isn't uncommon at all. Yes. Yes. You know? Yeah, it's true. And it's beautiful. It is. And then also one last thing that you had mentioned too was the touch. And culturally, mm. this was something that, um, you know, it, it still to this day is a little bit disarming sometimes where Italians mm. touch you when they talk to you, mm. right? They, yes. they, they, they stand and they hold your arm or you'll hold, you'll end up holding their arms back like you're in a little bit of a wrestle sometimes, <laughs> but you're always <laughs> Always touching each other when you're because it's this extended this humanity of being yes. uh, of being here and I said this to I was on another show a while back and I said you know Italy makes me feel human it yeah makes me feel alive. that's a great point Sam that's such a great point yeah really such a great point I mean they live very much in the present even if Florentines can talk a lot about the past 
you know, they give a lot of attention to the present and with touch and the time for communication, they, they really make you feel alive. Mm. Okay, so yeah. let's wrap up with a, a final question because now we're getting dreamy again. Let's bring the expectations back. <laughs> so for the, if we have some listeners who are starting to feel lonely or they're starting to notice themselves retreating and watching too much TV at night and not going out on their own, for example, can you give them some tips on how they can, you know, help themselves push through before it becomes, you know, difficult? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Well, I can share a bit of my personal experience. When I came to Florence, I didn't know anybody and I had been traveling a lot and I was really, really tired. Um, of moving and making new friends and people like moving again and and um, I was hitting a really hard point to be honest Sam and I, I felt like oh, I, I don't know what I'm doing here anymore and and I was communicating a lot with my family back home and they were trying to give me the strength to stay and just see it through and then decide um, and one of the best advice advice I got and I, I wish to share is just just go to like a coffee shop the same place every single day mm. and sooner or later someone will start talking to you like the staff here in, in bars restaurants they, they're very communicative mm. um, they're not just like there to sell you a coffee they'll make small chat with you the, the other locals that go there on a regular basis will start to notice you they'll start to approach you make small chat with you mm-hmm. and before you know it someone's inviting you to a dinner party or someone's inviting right. you out to do something in a social setting mm-hmm. and that's how you indirectly start to make a community of friends and do different activities so you got to really put yourself out there and it can be as small as literally going to the same place every day, um, just showing up. Yeah. Um, and if you can, if there, if there are clubs you can join or activities, whether expat or full of Italians, do it. I encourage you to just get active, mm-hmm. exhaust your physical and mental energy as much as you can. <laughs> so you don't become a hermit at home right. and just revert to Netflix. <laughs> And then, of course, the language, keep studying and don't be too hard on yourself. Just keep studying away so oh, that the communication gets absolutely. easier. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, on, you know, in terms of languages, whether you do an online course or an in-person course or self-study, whatever, um, you know, watch movies in Italian with English subtitles, movies that you know. OK, mm-hmm. if you're going to watch a movie, watch it in Italian, mm-hmm. a movie that, you know, watch it in Italian with English subtitles or vice versa you know, um, with uh, Italian subtitles. And um, another great tip is to watch cartoons. Right. <laughs> Italian cartoons. Or read kids' yeah, books. It's simple language. Yeah. Huh? Or read kids' books. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Then you won't feel so dumb. Kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> great one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, great. These are all such great tips. And I love um, some of the points that you brought up because I think a lot of people, a lot of our listeners can can relate to them. Either they've already gone through them or they're starting to feel them creep up now, Camilla. So thank you mm. so much for joining me today. Again, everybody, yeah. if you, um, on in the show notes, you'll see the contact of Camilla for Camilla and for yeah. her website, Loving You. And you can connect with her directly if you would like to and have some more questions. Thank you again, Camilla. It has been such a pleasure to chat with you again. You're so welcome. Thank you, Sam. And bye, everybody. <laughs> Moving to Italy does take courage for sure, and it can be and it will be life-changing for you. And adjusting to Italy's culture and the people and living here, it doesn't have to be a struggle. It's going to be frustrating for sure, but it doesn't have to be a complete struggle. And remember to adjusting to this new culture and this country is a journey. It takes time and it's okay to feel this mix of emotions along the way. And what you want to try to do is stay as positive as you can, embrace the experience. It's never going to go the way you planned it. There's always going to be a fork or several forks in the road, and you're going to have to make decisions and choices along the way. But celebrate your growth and your resilience. Every time you know, we have some people that say, oh my God, Samantha, I got one thing done today. It might've taken me four hours to do something that should have taken five minutes. 
but man, was it a successful day. I mean, one thing in a day is a good day here in Italy. So be sure to celebrate those little milestones and those little successes because they are big successes when it's a new culture. And with the right mindset and, you know, this, this willingness and eagerness to try, integrating into Italian society and your local community can really be almost exhilarating and inspiring and motivating if you let it. And trust me when I tell you that Italian people are truly some of the most hospitable people in the world. It still makes me almost choke up when I talk about this subject because they really, truly, truly are um, kind, happy, helpful people. Their culture is just based in this. And along with them and with all of um, your support system and your eagerness and your confidence to keep going, I know you will thrive here. I know you'll do it. It's time for listener questions. Just like the old radio call-in shows, my team has picked three listener questions all left on our voicemail. I have no idea what these questions are, but I haven't been stumped yet. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, Samantha. This is Barbara. I'm hoping you can clarify something for me. I've heard that you can gain Italian citizenship after living in Italy for a number of years, even if you don't have Italian ancestors who were able to pass their citizenship on to you or you haven't married an Italian citizen. Is this something that is an actual fact? And if it is, how long do you have to live in Italy as a non Italian citizen before you can actually claim Italian citizenship? Well, hello, Barbara, and great question. Citizenship in Italy is one of the most generous uh, or has m some of the most generous laws uh, available, meaning you can normally go back if you have Italian heritage, go back as many generations as you need, not through DNA, but actual verified generations to claim your citizenship through blood, your sanguinis through blood. But that's not the only way that you can get Italian citizenship. There's two other ways. One is through marrying an Italian, and the other way is through residency or naturalization. And that's the question that you were asking is what uh, is the time frame that you can become an Italian or you can apply for Italian citizenship through naturalization. And currently there's a, of course, this is, <laughs> this is Italy, so it's not always a straight answer, but I'll give you the clearest you can, because there's some different uh, variations. You can, once you become a legal resident of Italy, now this is really important, so it's not just when you get your permesso di soggiorno, your permit to stay, it's actually when you have registered at your local comune that you are a legal resident in Italy and you start submitting yearly income taxes. This is when you are a resident. So from that date forward, if you are a non-EU citizen, so if you are a third country national, American, Canadian, Australian, all of those, UK, British now, um, it, you have to live for 10 years in Italy as a resident, 10 years, and then you can apply for your citizenship through naturalization. You will have to show all of those years of income tax returns. You'll also have to show a lot of other documents. This is Italy. They love, love paperwork and bureaucracy. But you also have to have a level B1 language proficiency certificate. So this is important to make sure, I'm sure after 10 years, you should be able to achieve that. You will need to get that test done at an official testing site. Normally in Italy, the major universities, language universities can uh, hold these tests and they only hold them a couple of times a year. So go and get your certificate. So that has to be included as well. If you are an EU citizen and you've moved to Italy, your waiting time is actually shortened down to four four years. So from 10 years down to four years, if you're a European citizen, you can go through the process of applying for Italian citizenship through naturalization. And if you are actually do have Italian ancestors 
and unfortunately your father, mother and father or grandparents, just up to your grandparents, naturalized, breaking the line for you through your sanguinis, through blood, you actually can also naturalize an Italian citizenship faster than other people. This means you would have to come to Italy, live in Italy for three years full time. You'll need a visa to do that three years full time, and then you can apply for your Italian citizenship. The application process can take several years, but at least you can get the ball rolling after those time frames. So to recap, if you have lost your citizenship from your mother or your parents or your grandparents, it's a three years living legally in Italy as a resident. If you're a European citizen, it is four years. And if you are a non-EU uh, or Italian from a third country, it is 10 years. Hi, Sam. This is Tara, Tara Wright. And I know I should remember this by now, but could you tell me what information I need to apply for my tesserer? I have gotten residency, yay, but we need to go in so that we can register for our health insurance. And we know we have to pay, we know all that difficulty. But if you could just let me know what information we need to bring and what I need to do. Okay, health insurance in Italy. Uh, a big topic, actually, I'm going to have another show shortly on health insurance and health care in Italy. You can apply for the public health care system here in Italy as a foreigner. You can apply to join that on a voluntary fee. As you said, you already know about the amount. This year, starting 2024, there is a minimum amount of 2,000 euros per person, and it is calculated. Anything more than 2,000 is actually calculated on your income. So in order to apply for your health card or your national health care system here, you will need to attend the ASLA office. So this is the health department office of your local comune, and you'll need to bring with you your tax returns. Now, sometimes they don't ask for them, but sometimes they do because they'll need to calculate how much you need to pay. You need to bring your carta di identita. You'll need to bring your permesso di soggiorno, which is your permit to stay. And you'll need to bring your passport. I suggest you also bring your either your residential lease if you're renting or your property deed to prove where you live. This may not be needed, but it could be. It's always better to bring more documents than not. And what happens is, is you will go in, you will register. They will ask you to select a doctor. They won't be able to tell you which doctor's best. You have to just pick it blindly unless somebody you know um, has told you about a doctor in that office and that will just be your go-to doctor it doesn't mean you always have to go see that doctor but that's your doctor on record and then they'll fill out a little form that will tell you how much you need to pay and then you'll take that little form and head off to the post office and pay that bill they will give you a receipt you'll take everything back to the asla office and they'll finish up your process they will give you the tessera sanitaria which is the health care card they'll give you a copy of it like a photocopy of the number of what it looks like and then you will get that card later on in the mail hope that helps hi samantha this is lisa I'm researching buying a car uh, now that I've gotten my Italian driver's license and uh, our neighbors who are Americans um, just bought a car from a local dealer is a used Panda for 8,500 euros and they paid for it in cash, which they got out of ATM, their ATM machine. Is this illegal? And are there any negative ramifications for paperwork? I was a little surprised to hear about it. Thanks so much. Bye. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for the question. And first of all, congratulations on your driver's license. Not a small feat indeed. So now that you are going to be a teenager driving again <laughs> with restrictions in Italy and thinking about buying a car, as you know, you have to buy a lower powered car for at least, I think it's three years now. Um, but your question about your friend who has purchased a, pro a car for 8500 at a dealer and paid all cash is definitely a questionable. In Italy, just as of January, I think just, just turned January 2023, the uh, cash payment allowance in Italy has gone up to 5,000. It used to be 2,000. In fact, I remember when it was only 1,000 euros. So what that means is that you can't buy anything uh, with cash from an ATM, for example, 
for more than 5,000 euros, you have to declare it. And usually you'll have to, you could perhaps give 5,000 and then do a bank transfer for the difference or credit card or some kind of traceable amount. And they have these kind of initiatives in place actually all over the European Union and in Italy to help combat uh, money laundering. So, and taxes, of course, tax evasion is probably the biggest one for here in Italy. So I would suspect that your friend um, maybe had a couple of invoices or, or did it a, a roundabout way on how they actually purchased the car. Because when you purchase something cash, you often don't pay the VAT, which is 22%. And that's a huge amount on top of whatever the bill was. So, you know, a 10000 vehicle could cost you 2200 just in tax alone so paying cash can save you some some money but uh, no it is not the right way to do it and it is not legal for anything over 5000 euros well that's all for this week's episode thank you for listening if you have any questions about visas citizenship property and well really anything about moving to italy that you would like me to answer in an upcoming episode, please feel free to send us a voicemail at our website at smartmoveitaly.com slash podcast, or just click on the links in the show notes. Thanks again for listening. And remember, you can find all of the resources and the links to the people and the places that I mentioned in this episode inside the show notes. Ciao for now. A New Life in Italy podcast is a production of Sentire Media, created and hosted by me, Samantha Wilson. Production by London Nero, research and script by Maggie Marullo, and with special thanks to Ali Frothingham, Sofia Pisana, and the entire team at Sentire. Follow A New Life in Italy wherever you get your podcasts. And hey, if you're thinking of moving to Italy, whether full-time, part-time, or for a lifetime, Come and see me over at smartmoveitaly.com and we'll help you get here and start living your best life. And don't forget, if you love this episode, please rate and leave a review. It's much appreciated. I can't wait to meet up with you again next week, same time, same place. Ciao for now. Sentire Media Hey, podcast producers and show hosts. Do you want to join a podcast network that celebrates all things Italian? At Sentiri Media, we understand the allure of Italy and its unique culture. Our devoted team of hosts and producers are all driven by their shared passion for Italy. And we work tirelessly to create the best lifestyle podcasts and content that will whisk you away to the very heart of Italy. With us, you can savor the mouth-watering flavors, get lost in the stories from the past, break down the cultural barriers, and truly immerse yourself in the vibrant traditions of this intoxicating country. If you have a great podcast idea or are already in production and would like to join Sentire Media, head over to sentiremedia.com, that's S-E-N-T-I-R-E media.com, and find out how to submit your show.